Hi everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us again today. My name is Estefani. I'm one of the volunteers at the Poe and Stevens Spiritus Center. And before we start today, I would like to then the huge thank you to everyone who was part of our fundraising live event last Saturday. It was an amazing night. It was it was great music and really high vibrations. Uh, we like to thank Braza Man for his dedication, for his talent, for his amazing playlist. He was so inspired. Thank you, Andre. And uh, we like to thank. Carol, Carol for all the support. We like to thank Nina for being a good girl and staying asleep. Uh, we thank the internet connection for holding on throughout the admin team for putting together all the content and the information. You know, it takes a lot of hard work to make things seem so seamless. And, uh, but of course, most especially, we'd like to thank everyone who donated. Um, we managed to, um, collect about uh, almost $3,000. And whether you were able to give cash or you were able to simply send us your prayers and your good vibrations, we appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, as as uh, we've been telling you, um, uh, running the house uh, when we are, um, when we have presential meetings uh, takes funds and we also help people that there is a lot of need out there right now and, and we need the funds to do that. So there's lots of information in our Facebook and Instagram pages on, on the different uh, groups we, we help. And also uh, later in the year, we have the annual general, general meeting where we tell exactly how much went into each cause. So thank you so much. We, we appreciate and we enjoyed every second of it. Thank you guys. Okay, so as per usual, we're going to start with a prayer, and this is to help us settle in, to unite our, uh, us in, in thoughts, in vibrations. So let's take a deep breath. Let's close our eyes if you feel comfortable. If you don't, you don't have to. Take another deep breath. Relax your shoulders, sit comfortably, take another deep breath. Feel the vibrations of peace and calm wash over you. Let's connect with our spiritual guides that monitor this, these activities and start with the prayer that our Master Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. So be it. So you can open your eyes again. Thank you so much. Today's topic, Nothing Belongs to Me, comes from chapter 16 of the Gospel according to Spiritism, which is uh, this book over here, and uh, from a few other uh, lectures and, and um books from the Spiritist um, literature. And um, chapter 16 is called um, You Can't Serve God and Money, or as many people call it a bit more popularly, um, You Can't Serve Two Masters, right? And we, uh, and, 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 uh, and there are several items today where we, we are looking at items we were asked to look at items one to five, um, and they detail several passages from when Jesus was here. And many of them you would have heard of, certainly if you've been with us for a while. And the first one 
tells the story of a young rich athlete who came to ask Jesus about how to reach eternal life. It's called the parable of the rich young man or the young rich man. And from it came the famous or perhaps infamous line because it's so often misinterpreted um, that says it's easier for a camel to get through the eye of the needle than uh, for rich men to enter the kingdom of heaven. I have spoken about this, this passage a few times, so I'm not, I chose not to focus on it today, but I do want to remind everyone that Jesus was in no way ever saying that no rich person will reach heaven. He just was explaining that it was very difficult for them because they have access to a lot more opportunities and temptations than um, regular people, and they have to make many choices and, and they have to make an effort to choose the right paths, possibly more so than others. Uh, so it's just difficult for them. It's not impossible. Um, in, the, in the second passage, Jesus gives us a warning about greed when someone comes to ask him to interfere on an inheritance quarrel. And Jesus tells that as the par parable of the rich fool. So you can look that up as well. And uh, the fourth one, Jesus tells the parable of the bad rich man. And it's about uh, this, this rich guy and a beggar called Lazarus. Um, and you may be sensing a trend here. So a lot of these parables talk about the attachment that people have to their riches and, and, and how this makes them selfish and blind to the plight of others. So it's, it's and, and what is in, truly important in life. So it is, it is vital for us to remember that it's not the riches themselves that are the problems, but the importance that we give to them over and above other matters, including our spiritual and moral evolution, which is really the, the, the reason for us to be here incarnated on this planet in this moment, right? And if you go and read the chapter later, which I fully recommend, maybe when you're doing your gospel at home, don't stop at item five. You know, the next parable, which is not included in today's um, bibliography, is one of my favorite parables of all, which is the parable of the talents. But it's not, it's not, it's not for today, maybe another day. <laughs> and uh, today, I chose to focus on the third passage from the, this chapter, which talks about uh, when Jesus met a man called Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus for those thinking in Portuguese. <laughs> and the story is quite well known, but many people only remember uh, the main things like uh, Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He was very short. He went up a tree to see Jesus, um, who, uh, who then decided to have lunch at, at, at his house. And yes, all of that actually happened. Um, but as with every story told by Jesus, or sometimes it wasn't really him telling the story, but what he did was he used every moment um, to, to teach us lessons, to, to, to try and challenge our understanding our thinking and he picked the right moment and he was amazing in the way that he told stories that that um were able to be understood by people with different levels of um yeah understanding or knowledge or evolution and it, it's a bit like a, a, a philosopher from the past and i've forgotten his name but he says that we can never pass by a river twice Right, because you know, once we pass the river once, both the, um, the waters will move on and we will move on. So n no one will be the same again, even if you come back and do it again. Um, you're different. The, the the river is different. So with the parables, it's a bit like that. You know, every time you come back to it, um, the parables and the passages and anything to do with the time that Jesus was was uh, having his public life and teaching us. Every time we go back to it, we find new things. So. And one of the biggest blessings that we do have nowadays is that we're able to find out more uh, from the higher spirits. They give us further explanations because, I mean, let's be real, some of these parables or passages or things are, are, are a little bit hard to understand. You know, when you first read them, you think, huh? <laughs> and then the spirits uh, have been able to clarify a lot of things for us. And, and they have not just... Um, 
you know, more knowledge than we do, but they have access to um, something like we would call libraries or archives, but they are so much more because uh, what we have here, we might go there and find the written record or video or audio or whatever of what happened, but they can go back and relive the experiences from multiple perspectives, from the person who was going through it, from the people who were watching it. Uh, they can go back to see what led to that. They can go forward to see what happened afterwards. You know, so there's an amazing amount of context when they tell us a story. Um, so they can give us a lot, a, a lot better picture of the true meanings of, of you know, uh, or, or at least as much of the truth as we are equipped to observe at each moment, uh, right? So in the passage uh, with Zacchaeus, which is quite small in, in, in the Bible, in the gospel, but there's, there's just so much more to it. Um, so generally, people talk about Zacchaeus being a tax collector, right? But I think if we think in terms of, you know, uh, today, um, I'd say he was more of a debt collector. You know those companies that buy your debt uh, from another company and then make it their uh, aim goal to get the money back from you? So it happens similarly uh, back then. So the, the, the Jewish people, which is where this story is set, this uh, uh, Zacchaeus lived in Jericho, which was a, a city uh, one of the oldest cities uh, there are, and uh, it was always a, a sort of a, a passing point, and it had a lot of commerce. It was quite a rich city, and uh, but the, the the Jews had been conquered by the Romans, and the Romans, of course, had a huge empire, so um, they left a lot of the, the 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 running of the place in certain areas to the local people, but they did impose quite a few things, and one of them were the taxes or the fees that they charged, and and. I mean, most people dislike paying taxes, even when they know that they're going to provide you later on in life with, or, or uh, currently, like they're going to provide you with benefits, like maybe public hospitals or a pension or um, roads, unemployment benefit and all of that. And still no one likes to pay it. So imagine over there where the money that people paid actually went to Rome. So they were never going to see any benefit from it. So, and, and the Romans kind of outsourced that job to, um, Jewish people, so that you know, they went around taking money from their own people to give to the oppressors. So all these tax, tax collectors or publicans, as they were called, um, were hated. <laughs> and on top of that, a lot of them actually took some advantage because obviously um, they have paid the money to the Romans already. They have bought the, the debt. So to make a profit, because they're not doing the job for the goodness of their hearts, they're going to charge an extra. And many of them charge way too much extra. And then they had like, they came around knocking and collecting and they had enforcers and guards and, you know, they demanded that people pay and they had to pay in cash possessions or whatever. Otherwise you might go to you, you, you or any member of your family might be taken away as a slave or, you know, lots of, uh, there was physical punishment. There were lots of things that happened, would happen. So it, it was not a nice business, uh, but it was kind of one of those um, occupations where People assume that anyone who is in that occupation must be bad, must be a sinner, must be, you know, uh, not a good person. So they just, uh, yeah, most people that, that did this were not, were not very well liked. Um, so, but Jesus was very fond of breaking stereotypes. He did it again and again and again. He challenged people to look further, to think a bit differently, to, to not just take that first impression or that hearsay, you know. Um, so much of the faith at that time, and to be honest, to this day, was based on, on exterior, on surface, on superficial things instead of what really matters. So he constantly challenged people and he often mixed with different people um, because he, he always said that, you know, he came, he, he came for the sick, not for the healthy. And so, um, 
Yeah, so anyway, so the passage actually starts well before that bit that most people know where he goes up the tree to see Jesus. So Zacchaeus was indeed very rich, rich, and um, but he actually was a caring person and he did this job um, as far as we know, honestly, he wasn't one of those who uh, exploited people. Um, he, from from what we know from other books, so he was a caring person. He looked after his family. He looked after his employees. Everyone who worked for him had everything they needed to, to live comfortably. And he actually was usually ready to, to help anyone who came asking him for help. Um, and there was this this guy, this blind man called Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus for those thinking in Portuguese, but yeah, and and he is part of another passage which is very interesting as well if you like to go and look him up. But he used to beg on the side of the road in in, in Jericho because in those days if you were blind um, and you didn't have a family to look after you, you you pretty much had to to beg because that that there weren't many options um at the time for people who couldn't who couldn't see so he used to beg by the side of the road and every time that Zacchaeus passed by there he gave him something so this day he was passing by there and he didn't see uh Bartimaeus so he was worried he said oh something must have happened he's always here so he started asking around and people told him that Jesus had gone past there and cured Bartimaeus of his blindness and Zacchaeus like everyone else had already heard about Jesus, but suddenly he felt this irresistible urge to go and meet him, right? So he found out uh, what time he went past and where he was going to with his disciples. And when he realized that he could still catch them, he took off running, running. And, you know, just think about that for a moment. Zacchaeus may not have been very well liked, but he was distinguished. He had a place in society and he did not care about that for a second in a society that was full of uh, you know behavior expected behaviors and appearances he took off running he just wanted to catch up to um jesus and 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 and, and because this was towards the end of um you know jesus's time uh, with us uh he everywhere he went he drew a crowd by this point because he had done a lot of, uh, you know, cures and things. And um, so he couldn't move very quickly. So uh, Zacchaeus did catch up with them. And uh, but when he got there, there was this massive crowd. Right. And um, we often hear about Zacchaeus um, short stature as the reason that he had to go up the tree to see Jesus. and. But we always have to remember that a lot of what's in the Bible and the gospel is full of symbolism, right? So we can't just read the words. We have to think about them. We have to bring them to us, to our lives today. What does that mean for us? What is it trying to tell us? Because Jesus was all seeing and he was incredibly intelligent in the way he put the, the, the he gave the teachings exactly at the moment using things that happened, simple um, simple elements, right? And um, so, yes, Zacchaeus was physically short, but he was a powerful person. He had people who worked for him. He was used to dealing with difficult situations. He could have easily bullied his way to the front, easily. Um, so when we try and look into the, the the actual meaning of this so that we can uh, you know uh, bring the lesson to our own realities we can see that Zacchaeus was short in stature spiritually as well as physically and by going up the tree what did he do he elevated himself physically and spiritually to see Jesus so we are of also short in stature and need to elevate ourselves to truly see Jesus and understand his teachings. That is why we're always talking about the inner reform, the need to know ourselves, the need to do the best we can with the knowledge that we have, the conditions that we've been given. Because the more we know, the more we understand, the more 
we the, the the better we are able to be and it's not automatic we still have to make decisions and live by our beliefs but when we do elevate ourselves like when he went up on the tree it opens up a whole new view of things a new perspective that we didn't have before when we were down there right so so that is important then as soon as um Zacchaeus elevates himself in his wish to see Jesus, what happens? Jesus sees him immediately. And he will do that with us as well because Jesus is already there. We are the ones who have to who have to have to wake up, to have that realization, you know, that we have that that you know, if we want to see him, we want to understand him, we want to follow him, we, ha we have to sort of do a few things and differently, or we have to really follow the teachings rather than just, you know, let them in one ear out the other. So, um, but, you know, whenever we turn to Jesus, he will always be there for us, always, like it was uh, for Zacchaeus. And when Jesus saw that Zacchaeus had elevated himself and had his heart open to the teachings because Zacchaeus went after him running so uh, he was ready he was ready and willing and able and Jesus says come down quickly I must um, stay at your house today and Zacchaeus did so immediately and full of joy um, so what was Jesus doing when he told him to come down quickly because I have to go to your house he was calling him to action and Zacchaeus rushed to let Jesus into his house. When we talk about letting Jesus into our house, our house, we mean letting him into our hearts, his teachings into our hearts, his example into our hearts. Um, and, and that is often a part that we neglect because most of us have grown up hearing and knowing a lot of, of Jesus' teachings, even studying them sometimes. But a lot of us don't apply them in our daily lives you know we leave, we think we leave it for later or we think it's too hard or we believe that it's okay to do to to follow them some of the time um you know so jesus calls Zacchaeus to action to actually let him in let him in turn his life around and Zacchaeus does that with no hesitation so that is a great example for us to follow there is another little lesson there for us and when they went to Zacchaeus's house um, there were many criticisms from the crowd people did not approve of Jesus going to the house of a perceived sinner of a person of a bad life a publican a tax debt collector you know um, and that included some of the disciples because the disciples had been with Jesus um, for almost three years now, but they had a lifetime of conditioning, you know, so they still had a lot of behaviors that were more like everyone else's than, than, than what Jesus was trying to teach them. But he did not listen and did not care. He went there and, um, you know, he went there to, to, to have lunch and to stay at Zacchaeus's house because, as you know, they, they sort of uh, went from place to place and they needed to, to have someone take them in each time or they have to, you know, sleep outside in the desert. I don't know. And, um, and, I th and, and, you know, I think Jesus not only, you know, liked to do that, he did that on purpose because, you know, even in this, you know, the society at that time was, was very fixated on, on, on external, you know, things that show that you have faith, that you did the right thing, um, but not really, you know, that dedicated to making the, the the change to to living really the, the the good life even even with the teachings that they had at the time without jesus and they were very judgmental and and jesus wanted tried really hard to get us to stop judging people without because we don't know 
their circumstances. We don't know their life context. We don't know any of that. So people judged Zacchaeus for being a sinner, for having a bad life, when they had no idea if he really was. And Jesus actually did have all that knowledge, and every time he chose not to judge. So who are we to judge people, right? But anyway, as we said earlier, Jesus liked to challenge these stereotypes, and he paid no mind to the mutterings. He 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 went there. Um, he went there to Zacchaeus' house because he knew Zacchaeus was essentially a good person. He wasn't perfect. He had faults, but no one is perfect in this moment in time or two thousand years ago. And you know, so in his essence, he was a good person. And when they were at the house, Zacchaeus told Jesus that, you know, he was willing to part with half of his possessions to help the poor, um, you know, to help those in need. And that he was so confident that he had done business in an honest manner that he promised that if anyone, if he had harmed or cheated or anyone um, showed him that he had, you know, harmed them in any way, he would pay them back fourfold. So not just give them back what was theirs four times that amount so he was very confident and um so you can see that Zacchaeus so truly let Jesus in and took his call to action that he immediately realized that all that money that he had was not what was going to bring him happiness that he could do so much more with it because he was a very rich man at what point does it become enough you know like he had plenty for him to live for his children for everyone I mean he could do more right and Jesus said that today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. And for the son of man came to seek and to save what was lost. And so many people interpret that Jesus said that because Zacchaeus was a rich man working for the oppressors and decided to give away half of his fortune. And But it's so much more than that. It wasn't Zacchaeus. Uh, Zacchaeus's riches or, or his job, that was the problem. The salvation came because a good man took Jesus into his house, into his heart, and he realized that he could do more with his time on the earth, with his talents that he was given, with his possessions. There was so much good. There's so many people that he could help around him. You know, so it was Zac Zacchaeus's awakening, that moment of enlightenment, that was what was saved you know, the, the saved what was lost, you know, that was the salvation that came into the house because he turned his life around completely. It wasn't just that, you know, oh, okay, no, I, I'll just give away half of what I have. He, he completely changed as a person into his way of seeing things and, and, um, and, and from other literature since um, there have been several reports of Zacchaeus devoting his life from that moment on to helping others, um, especially those that were in great need, that he indeed gave away most of his possessions and he only kept what was necessary for his family to live a, a comfortable but modest life. And that even beyond the incarnated life, he went on to become a teacher in the spiritual realm and that after, you know, after his material passing and that he went on to live other incarnations where he dedicated his his life now yet completely to help others with, with, with detachment from material riches and possessions. Just like, you know, because sometimes we can't do it all in one lifetime. You know, we do a lot of the work here and then we reap the benefits later. Much like when we hear that, you know, sometimes we are paying for things that we you know, we are going through things now as a consequence of things that we did in the past. Well, the same th in the same way that many good things that we do that we, you know, work on in this time around in this in this current incarnation, we might see the benefits in another incarnation, you know, so we must be patient. I know that is a really hard thing to do. And there was a lecture on patience not that long ago. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, it's, um, where was I? I forgot. Oh, yes. So he, 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 the, his new incarnations, he, he had a lot of detachment from material riches and possessions, but he still carried all the love and intelligence that he had acquired over, you know, over his, his time and his experience. So he's, he's been an amazing character. 
and and we could actually go on and on and on analyzing but time presses on it is amazing it goes so quickly and we i can't go into any more detail but before we move on to our final prayer i just want to recap some of the learnings because i know sometimes i talk a bit too fast i try i try to slow down but it's <laughs> especially if i'm all by myself here you know there's no one to to tell me to slow down uh, it's a bit harder so, but anyway, today, what did we learn today? Well, you might have learned more, but I know I learned with Zacchaeus that when we want to go towards Jesus, we should not care what people think or what people will say. We let our hearts and our conscience guide us. We learn with Jesus to look deeper than appearances, to not assume someone is a certain way based on superficial judgments, perhaps to not judge at all. We learn from Jesus to always expect the best from people. Instead of focusing on their faults, we, tr we should focus on trying to help them realize their potential. We learn from Zacchaeus that to meet Jesus, we must elevate ourselves. And then we learn that uh, when we do, we must act quickly. We can't just think, oh, Jesus is great and the message is cool and leave it at that. We have to go to him and let him into our hearts, into our hearts. And we learn that you can do a lot with riches and possessions, but that they are not what is most important. Because when we leave this earth, we don't even take our bodies with us. So yes, we must earn a living. We do, we do and are entitled to live comfortably and have you know, more than we need. But we must never forget that our main purpose for being here is to actually evolve morally and spiritually that is what needs to be our primary focus and if we have not been doing that up until now well we can start it's never too late jesus demonstrated this to us many many times with zacchaeus with paul with mary magdalene so many examples and he he, he did not focus on their past on their mistakes, all of them had made big mistakes. And he acknowledged them, Jesus acknowledged their mistakes, he advised that they need, didn't need to change, even less famous um, uh, people, but he always, every time he cured anyone, every time he said, go and sin no more. So he's, he's acknowledging that they've done wrong and he's telling them that they need to change, right? But he doesn't dwell on that. On their failings he always focused on what they could what they could be instead if they took up his teachings so really like our beloved medium Sheikh Xavier always said though nobody can go back and make a new beginning anyone can start over and make a new ending all right so uh, we're going to do our final prayer. Uh, uh, um, yeah, we are. We have to finish up. And um, so let's close our eyes again. Take a deep breath. And let's focus inwards. Let's go inside ourselves. Let's find that part of ourselves that holds all our good thoughts our good feelings, our good emotions. Let's feel that for a little while. Let's feel that feeling spreading through us. Let's feel that positivity taking over our bodies. Let's feel it reaching our minds, flooding our hearts with positive vibrations and love feeling so much of that positive energy that it emanates from us and we can share it with the world. Let's imagine this positive energy reaching our brothers and sisters who are going through difficult situations. Let's visualize our positive vibrations reaching out to those we love and even to those we don't yet love. 
Let's send our positive vibrations to our family, our friends, our neighbors, our colleagues, and everyone around them. As we have seen lately, we are so much more connected than we realize. So let's share our love and positive vibrations with absolutely everyone. Let our vi positive vibrations and our love go to where they are most needed. We can come back now. Open our eyes. Feeling energized, feeling peaceful, feeling that our homes have been inundated with our love and our positivity. And we can carry this feeling throughout the rest of the week. And you don't actually have to wait a whole week. There are lots and lots and lots of, uh, of these lectures or chats or um, talks in our Facebook page and our Instagram page. They're all saved in there when you need a little comfort, when you need a little boost, whether you've missed one or you want to rewatch one because most likely you forgot more <laughs> what people said. Um, just, yeah, they're always there for you, for you, for us. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon next week. Take care. Much love. Bye.